This is the UME 12EV, a 1.2 ton mini excavator. It's all electric. Now look, I know some of you have already drunk the Kool-Aid and all I had to say was electric and you're fully in. And some of you are diesel desperados and I said the word electric and you're like, hell no. But let's give this thing a chance. Let's hop on it. Let's see what it's like to operate. Let's see what it can do and let's start talking about a few of its specs. <laughs> yep, you heard right. Underneath the sexy bodywork is a 17 and a half kilowatt hour battery powering a four kilowatt motor that puts out 23 Newton meters of torque. And all that battery power is spinning a hydraulic motor that puts out 22 liters a minute of flow at 16 MPa pressure. The narrowest track width is 800 mil, meaning that it will go through most residential gateways without a problem. The dozer blade lifts to 145 mil and digs to 200 mil. It's got a three meter digging radius and a maximum digging depth of just over 1750 mil. And when you buy this thing for just under 24 grand, you won't go home empty handed. You get seven different earth moving and digging attachments, as well as a really high quality 15 amp charger and a complete toolkit, including a grease gun. It requires a 15 amp input supply. Now that of course means you can't file down the earth and expect your 10 amp normal household supply to cope with this thing. You do need a 15 amp socket somewhere near your shed. And if you're gonna charge this thing remotely, remember that your generator is gonna to have to cope with up to 13 and a half amps of draw. Even with the heavy duty charger, the Life PO4 batteries that are built in will take about eight hours to go from 10% to 90% capacity. Life PO4 is a good choice for this sort of digger because they are maintenance free, they'll last for a very long time and they have better characteristics for performance in heat than standard lithium ion. The battery is built in so eventually you'll have to get it replaced by a technician. All right, let's operate it. One thing I've been critical of electric machines coming out of China for in the past has been a complete and utter lack of operator safety in terms of cutout switches or shutdown. You would literally be able to get off the machine and operate all of the controls from standing on the ground, which with a machine that swivels is never a good idea. Well, the UME has solved that really cleverly. As soon as you get up off the seat, she shuts right down, none of the controls will work. But as soon as you get back on the seat, it's party time. Safety that's actually intelligent and doesn't make you go through a whole shutdown procedure. Quality wise, initial impressions are good. All of the bolts have been torqued and penned. All of the moving parts are greasable and have nipples. The hydraulic hoses are well covered, well fitted, no signs of any leaks at all. Once again, their fittings are torque marked as well. Vulnerable hydraulics down low are covered with steel reinforcing. The tracks look to be good quality with reasonably thick gear drives. The machine looks pretty solid overall. Even the HDPE bodywork is pretty tough. Gah, that'll buff right out. Rightio, well I've got this thing on full volume. Let's track off and see how it performs. And at the moment, we're hitting around about 100 decibels with noise. And we're not setting any land speed records. With the GPS speedo not even registering. Hydraulics wise, the controls seem to be pretty good with the ability to keep tracking while spinning and also reaching and controlling the bucket. There is some slowdown in speed when I operate the bucket, but you can track and grab at the same time. 
Okay, so that's enough about the features and the stats of the machine. It's time to put it to use. And for the last couple of days, I've been trying to use as many of the attachments as I can, doing odd jobs that have been hanging around the farm for long enough. It's given me a great understanding of this machine and I've been able to use it in really tight spots, doing more domestic type work, doing some gardening. Yeah, I'm just doing the gardening now, darling. Yeah, of course I'm being careful. You know me, every plant's special. And then doing what everyone thinks of when they think of an excavator, digging trenches. Testing the breakout force in this sort of soil for a little machine like this is a little bit difficult because everyone's gonna think that this soil is really light and fluffy and easy to dig. But anyone who's lived with this really thick clay knows that as soon as it gets a bit of water in it and it pugs up, it's as hard as concrete. The little girl's getting through it reasonably well. I've dug a trench probably 400 deep in not much time at all. Now, I'm not gonna put on my resume that I'm a trench digging expert and anyone who's excellent at digging trenches is probably gonna cringe when they see this trench, but it's proof of concept. She has enough breakout force to dig most trenches around most farms. Whether or not it's enough for contractors trying to get through rocky soil, that's debatable, but I think that's debatable for any small machine. You've got to understand, this is a 1.2 tonne machine. It's battery powered, it does have its limits, it's got its advantages and its disadvantages. But at the end of the day, if you want a trench dug, it does the job. I've also been able to clean up wood piles and have a go at a few of the jobs that you wouldn't immediately think of an excavator for. Let's talk about the layout of the controls. They're pretty good with the standard joystick controls that you'd expect in any excavator, and they're in the standard pattern. We've got two foot controls. The first foot control is for mast angle. So you can bring the mast right around, which is kind of handy for tight spaces, and you can bring it back again straight. It goes in both directions. And then you've also got your foot control for the little grab here on the other side. Both of the foot controls are made out of decent aluminium and the back of the foot control flicks up to give you more room in the cab. The forward and reverse controls are a little bit awkwardly placed. They're a bit far forward, so when I want to go forward, I'm bending my back a long way in a C shape. Now I know that there's not many excavator operators that don't end up with a bad back for this reason of leaning forward, but this is an excessive lean. I'd love to see these levers come back a little bit more so that they're a little bit closer to the operator. You've got two little levers down beside the forward and reverse controls, and they're both really cool. The first one is, of course, for adjusting your greater blade with your digging depth of 300 mil. The outside one allows you to widen and narrow the tracks, making the machine more stable or able to get through gateways at literally the touch of a lever. Well, after a couple of days playing, what are the positives and negatives with this little beastie? Like every review, there's gonna be good and bad. To start with, the cab's roomy and the controls are well laid out with the exception of the forward and reverse. The instrument panel, although awkwardly located, is easy to read and the battery charge indicator seems accurate, which is unusual for battery powered machines, strangely enough. The flip-up foot controls are good and made out of sturdy aluminium. There was one small hydraulic weep on the grab arm, but that was it. The post hole digging attachment comes as four separate parts and it's designed to be plugged in to the ancillary hydraulic post just here. But there are no quick releases, meaning that every time you put the post driver on and take it off, you're on the spanners undoing the hydraulic lines and getting fluid everywhere. I think for the cost of this machine, I'd be asking for quick releases to be put on the hydraulic hoses for this attachment. Makes it a much easier job to do. We're getting used to plastic now. The bodywork is tough enough. It's quite strong and it's abrasion resistant, meaning that the scuffs and scratches aren't gonna bother you too much. 
and it's easy to clean. The hydraulics were more than adequate for most of the applications. I did find that they probably maxed out when I was digging the trench, although I got it done in reasonable speed. And at times when I was tracking, I felt like there could have been a little bit more flow just to support my movement. The machine was really nimble in tight places and it makes it a perfect option for people that have small job sites. Although the battery is hard mounted in, it is a Life PO4 and previous Life PO4 batteries that I've tested claim ridiculous amounts of recharge capacity and throughout the two days of use on the farm I only used about 50% of the battery. I wasn't using it all the time because every time you get off it shuts down. The safety upgrades on this machine are smart, high quality and actually, if anything, perhaps improve its performance which to be frank with you is a first so if you're a tradie and you're a fan of power tools maybe check out the 12 ev next time you need an excavator it could surprise you if you like these kind of reviews don't forget to hit the little subscribe button down there give it a thumbs up and there's channel memberships now and more i'll see you next week with something else this is fun <laughs>